Hey you guys, it's Cami with Coast DIY and I am here with your Americana Summer Village. Um, so this is your house tutorial and it is the tutorial that will help you. Um, it's mainly to show you, well I'll do the whole house, but it's mainly to show you how to do the interchangeable windows. So what I'll do in your kit, when you get your kit, I'm going to tell you I'll look and see what minute that is. So if you want to fast forward to that part, you can do that. But we're just going to make the house. So I'm going to be making what I'm calling the garage house. There's uh, three houses in the series, in the collection. So this is the garage house because it has a house. I've kind of been super inspired by Charleston for this series. Let me bring this down and I'll just kind of start to paint and talk a little bit about the collection and where my ideas came from. So I, I think the garage is obvious that it looks a lot like some of the houses that you see in Charleston. Um, I went for, this time I decided not to go double-sided so that I could keep the prices down a little bit. Um, you know, wood. Wood's tough. Um, I'm gonna be doing stain. And so what I've done is I have just a really wet brush and some gentle olive stain. I'm gonna do a green house. And I will come back and paint uh, something in the windows. I've been doing like either the row house that will be in the, oh, a little high up in there. You gotta think about where your top part's gonna be. Okay, good, I, I didn't get too, too high. Um, but I've been doing a row house, which is kind of like a really dark, it's, it's technically a dark brown, I would say. Um, gray brown, gray, not grayish, but like, under the right light, you can definitely see that it's brown, but it's got a lot of gray-black undertones. So I've been using it like a black because it's it's dark. If you add a lot of water to it, it can be light. So don't don't let that throw you. I keep watering it down. I like to show you the consistency I like to use. Now, stain, you know, stain likes to get going right away. So wherever you started, I like to just kind of, I had to go a little bit darker right there because I had like a hard line and that can happen. Stain starts to soak in the second you touch the wood with it. So you kind of got to be ready to move But I just went a little darker right there. I don't think you can tell that I did that compared to the rest. So I think it looks like a face. That's good. I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do weathered fence on the roof. So again, just Super water down. Now, weathered fence is one that you don't have to worry too much about your score marks. It, as long as you're watered down good and not using it straight, it will soak down in those score marks and you won't have to clean them out. If you go straight on with your stain, like paint, you can do that. You can get a nice look like that, but just know it may fill your score marks and be prepared with like a straight pen or something to clean them out. I like to clean them out while it's wet if I need to. So be prepared for that. Um, I'm going to be doing row house accents. So this is 
the row house. It Again, it looks black, but I'm gonna be doing the garage door in row house. If you look at, if you kind of look at Charleston house, like type in Charleston house on Google, a lot of the garages are just painted solid black. Like if you don't catch them in the right light, you're not gonna see any detail. It's just gonna be black. And that's kind of the look I'm going for. I did put score marks on here that looked like one that I saw, looked like a barn door under there. And this will mirror the doors that are in the carriage ride piece. There's a carriage ride piece. I made a carriage. So that's cute. So it there is some Charleston inspiration. There's a little Williamsburg inspiration. Kind of Americana historic towns. Now, if I were to wipe this right now, you would see a very brownish tone to it. But I'm not going to wipe it. I'm going to let it sit on heavy like that. So it'll have a little bit more darker gray, charcoal -y, black kind of tone. I could have used black in this palette, but I felt like the row house, I don't know, I just feel like it, it looks like it's been weathered and like it's been around a little while. Um, if you want a darker tone with stain, you can let your first coat dry and see how dry that looked when I tried to paint it? That's how I know to dip in my water. If you wonder how I know that, that's how I know that. Um, it should slide on very easily. But um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, second coat. Let it dry fully and just put a second coat on. And it's buildable. I like those colors together, very rich. And um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a black door. I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do for the frame. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch that up. Hmm. See, I'm gonna, okay. Now I'm gonna go with the black door because I feel like that's that was my original thought. I say black, but it's row house. I went a little bit lighter, but because it's gonna be inside of a door casing, you're gonna see that it's a door. I'm gonna need to stare at that door casing for a minute to see what color I want to put on there. I'm not sure yet. I know that I want to do black shutters or row house shutters. So while my brush, now let me talk to you about these shutters. The shutters have lots of score lines. Very, very wet, if you use stain, very wet brush and just let it soak down in there. I have been choosing colors, like I didn't do white. I didn't do a color that if it got down in the grooves, I would be upset by that because there's a tremendous amount of detail on these shutters. So this is before and after painting, staining. So I did some, I did some this color, I did some early American, the brown color. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think I did. I think that I think that's all I've been doing. I might have done a weathered fence. But I've been going with the more darker. You could go with um, unfinished, like just the natural wood, I think would be fine. Um, it has to be 
a very wet stain or your brush just won't run over all those scores. It, it's a little frustrating if you've got a dry brush. So just make it wet. Simple. I'm gonna think about the window sills for just, or frames for just a second. These two maybe they will be the same color. Well, I've got this row house. I'll go ahead and paint the stand. The stands are different widths depending on the building that you get. Some buildings, if you get the character add-on kit, uh, I've made them a little wider on the stand so you could set a character on it. But even like with this one, if you wanted to set a character in front, you could do that. All my characters are in by my photography thing, so I can't show you, but you'll, the photos will be done by the time you see this, I hope. Okay, so we've got our little topiaries. And then we have our handle. So I think I'm gonna do weathered fence, the, the roof color. Keep the palette slim, not too many colors. do the same on the windowsills. Windowsills, I have been just doing this. I don't, I've been worrying only really about the kind of the insides, top and bottom. The edges will touch up against the shutters. But I've been just kind of tapping on the top. There's very little wood surface there. So I've just been kind of flat top, flat tapping the brush. If you try to like line paint mm. you're gonna want to be mad at me so just scrape your brush across the top there I don't paint the insides like this part here but you could do that if you want color to show there I haven't done that um, I'm gonna do the windows um, I need to clean this so this is gentle yellow. Um, I'm just gonna go right out of the cap because I don't need that much. Uh, the palette that I'm talking about will be available. This will be your Americana palette. And it is the palette that I've used for all the pieces. I did do some mixing of stains. Uh, the colors that were very interesting to mix is anything with this gentle yellow. This gentle yellow is very white based. And like, for example, I tried to get like a, I was feeling lazy and I was, I didn't have my olive green with me. And I thought, oh, I can make olive green. Nope. I made like a teal. So I used the navy with the gentle yellow and made like a teal, but it was, Super pretty. I used it on some of the bookstore. Okay. You could do white in the windows. If you are a heavy duty painter, you could paint curtains in the windows. You could paint a candle in the window. If you've got like cute decoupage papers, you could use the window shape and trace around it and do a little rectangle of decoupage something in the window. Like if you've got, I don't know, some kind of detail, napkins or scrapbook papers. Okay, 
That took a little longer just because I was trying to keep it within the in the square. Okay. I'll need more of that when I get to the flowers. So then let me get back to the I'm going to do weathered fence on this handle. And I'll do weathered fence on the pots. I could do something bright, but I think, you know, the palette, my palette is leaning a little more Williamsburg, I think, than Charleston, to be honest with you. More muted. <laughs> but you've got plenty of room to play within the palette. And then let's see, I'm gonna put the star up here on the top. I don't want it to be gray on gray. I think I'll do, hmm, I think I'll do green. Like it's been painted to match the house. This is like those metal stars you see everywhere. And then while I have my green, I can do the top of my bushes here. Be surprised with just a little color. You don't need to go crazy. Okay. I'm gonna set this aside, let this dry for a second. I like the colors. Now let's talk about painting the window bunting. So you've got two options for your window coverings. You've got your uh, flag bunting and little flower pots. So you will need a small brush. I'm gonna talk you through how I paint it with stain. If you're gonna use paint, you can do that too. I might consider watering down paint um, I'm going to need red. I've already got some white out. Just need a little bit of red. See, I've got a lot of paint out here just because I'm painting a few things. But when you squeeze out your paint, saying, out of your little bottles, if you get the kit, like less than a dime. Okay, don't go crazy. I need to clean the So like even less for something like this. So very detailed brush, okay? The smallest one you got. I like to start, um, let me see if I can, you know what I'll do on the video? I will, uh, I'll do close up. I can control that on the editing. Um, I like to, so here's the deal. White is a little bit hard. Um, but let me kind of show you what I like to do. I like to do the white stripes first and notice I'm going in with a wet brush just on the edge of my white. Okay. And I'm going to take my time and you're just going to paint with the edge of your brush. I mean, I'm not perfect. I just got a little bit out of the line there. Uh, the thing with stain, you, well, with this one, because the area that you're staining is so small, you don't want your brush to be soaking wet, but you don't want it to be dry either, because if you are watching, when it's wet, you can kind of pounce like I'm pouncing. I'm not brushing as much as I'm pushing. And because there's a score line in the wood, It'll help protect the next space. And then I can just kind of come back and clean that up. So I just take my time with these. Funny enough, these little buntings take much longer than the rest of it just because it's 
detail work. And I got a little extra water in my brush. You can probably see that. So I'm going down the middle so I don't get too much close to the edge first. And then I can move that stain over once it's on the piece. Okay. So that's that. I'll go ahead and finish one with talking. And then I will uh, speed through the other one. So I'm going to do the blue next. I'm going to load my brush the same way. Just a little bit of blue. And I'm going to be covering right over the stars. Don't try to go around them. Too much. And remember, if you're doing this, and let's say you're color isn't quite even all the way across that's okay you can do a second coat don't don't stress about that notice that i turn the piece a lot whatever works best with my hand position I think I got a lot of water there. Yeah, so I'm just being real careful. And so that's the blue. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna do the red. Rinse my brush, do the same. Very wet brush load. Red's easier because it's on the edges of the piece, I feel like. So I just kind of do the center of this part and then push out. You can kind of see how wet that is. And then I'm going to go around the edge. I'm just taking my time. I like to make sure I don't get too much in the groove, the score line on these because I feel like that score line uh, does make a difference in the look. It gives it like a like an outline. Okay, so that's that now. I'm going to leave that to dry. I want the blue to dry more before I show you how to do the stars. So I'm going to really quick do the flowers. I rinsed my brush. I'm going to get me some white paint. And here's how I do the flowers. I'm going to just paint all the way over all of them and go in the grooves. I'm not going to panic about the grooves. Even if I get a little bit on the leaves now, I'm not gonna panic about that either because I can go back and cover on the leaves if I have to. I'm not being too perfect. I'm just laying down a good coat. You can do any color. I like the white because it looks like daisies. I've done some yellow. I think I did. I took a little red and yellow and made kind of a orangey coral color on the general store ones. They kind of look like, what is it, Gerbera, Gerbera daisies. Okay, I'm gonna let that white dry. You're gonna notice that it's gonna turn gray at just what happens sometimes on the first white coat. While that's drying, I'm gonna get me a little bit of green. Do my leaves. So 
so nothing too fancy. Now for the flower pot part, um, you know, I think I'm gonna do yellow. I think that would be really pretty standing out against the green. So I'm gonna, instead of wasting a bunch, I'm just gonna drop some out of the lid on there. And I'm gonna just be careful. Now yellow looks a lot like the wood color. That's okay. I need a little more water that got. It's not, it wasn't flowing. Ooh, that's a lot of water. That's okay. If you watching that, see how it runs when I have too much of the water, it runs right up to the score line. Just don't turn your piece over because that'll mess it up. But if you have a lot of water like that, it's just like managing the water flow. Okay. Now, I probably do what yellow centers on the flowers, but I want to get back and do one more coat on my white before we do that. And now I've got a slightly drier brush. It's dragging a little bit, but it's okay. I could be really precise on these petals, but if you're not new here, you know better. That is not my style. Again, slightly drier. I kind of went right into the stain, but when I do that, I need to be careful. I'm just staying right on the top. I'm not, I'm not pushing hard. I'm literally just dry brushing right across the top. And then I get this one. Now, again, it's stained. It's going to soak in, but this will look a little whiter with the second coat on here. If you want white, 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 you should probably use paint or do a third or fourth coat. Okay. So that, that looks good. Now, we're going to come back to do these stars. Now, those stars are engraved. I'm gonna tell you what I did. Oh, here's a sample. If you look really, 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 really close, you're gonna see a dot. Now, you might practice this, you might not. You probably want, you want a wet bristles. I don't want it dripping. but I don't want any water right here. Make sure you get all the water off your ferrule because it, before you know it, the water will run down and you got too much water. But even though my, I've been really bad about my brush and leaving it in the water, see how it's curved, I still have a good point on my brush. I'm gonna take that point and I'm gonna try to zoom in the camera and give myself a second. I'll zoom in the camera on this point and I'm just gonna touch that dot right in the center of the star Might even do a couple. I'm not too stressed out about having it be perfection. Now, if you get this last one that I did, if you get it right and the water ratio is perfect, the stain will flow into the star score marks and it'll look more like a star. But if you get too uh, stressed out about that and try too hard to make that happen, it may get messy. So my advice is, well, don't do what I just did. Whew, that was close. I almost just squished that everywhere. But just do a dot. That's my advice. So now, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna do the yellow in the center of the flowers. And then I'm gonna do the next 
bunting and flowers, but I'll speed that process up so you don't have to watch that too. Now I'm gonna do really wet yellow and just dot right around that center a few times. Notice my brush is straight up and down. There's one little right there. And it's, they're not gonna be perfect. I'm sure you can tell, because I've zoomed the camera. They're not perfect, but from a distance, they're gonna be great. So now I'm gonna speed this video up and you can watch me paint the second bunting and the flower. So I'm gonna let these, ah, man, I am rough on this one. All right, let these two that I just made dry a little bit. And let's assemble, let me this. Put this back on. Okay, I'm gonna assemble this. If you've not seen my glue pot, this glue has been in here for a week. It, this glue pot, it comes with these tools. You don't need any of it, but I love it. It is starting to get a little glue gooey because I've been working a lot today and I've got a little bit on the top there where I've left it open a lot of the day today, getting the final designs done, but I like it because it has helped me not waste as much glue. I like to pour it out and kind of do this type of assembly, but you never know exactly how much you need in this way you just put the lid on. And the lid itself is like a, uh, it'll hold the utensils, but I've been putting them in my water because it's water-based glue and it's just as easy. All right, so I am just making sure things align. Glue will shift. Now this is the first designs I haven't, that first village I've done that's only one-sided. So that's a new thing for me. I actually like it a lot. Um, I did not paint the back of mine, but if you want to paint the back, you can do that. I would do that maybe. I don't know that you'd need to do it before you assemble. You could assemble it and then paint once it's assembled. The glue I use is Type Bond Quick and Thick. You can get it at Lowe's, you can get it on Amazon. It's in my, um, it's on my Amazon list. And now, what I'm gonna do before I put on my, um, I lost one of these. Oh, there it is. Uh, before I put my doors and stuff on, I'm going to put my stand on because your doors are going to touch the stand. Now, your stand doesn't have to stay on it. You don't have to glue it on, but you do need to make sure it's on the bottom. And I think what I'm going to do leave it up. You don't need to use a ton of glue with your craft kits. I mean, don't go crazy. 
Trying to make it flat though. You don't want it to be bumpy. All right. I'm not pushing that on hard yet because I want to get this on. Yep. Yep. You can do these one piece at a time. I'm just being. Efficient, is that the word I'm looking for? Maybe. Again, you can see I'm not the perfect gluer, but I do try to make sure it's flat and I try to get it on before the glue dries. That's kind of key. Now, the only thing I've got to watch for is I want these to go like this. There we go. So now I know they'll fit. I can push my doors on. Now I could take the stand off now if I wanted to because everything is in the right spot. But because I work on my lap desk on top of my table, I've got a lip so I can just leave it right where it is. But always make sure you check on my kits how the stand assembles so that you make sure you don't put your pieces too low. I usually try to include that in the little tips and tricks sheets that I include. This little, little garage door hanger. Not really sure where that's supposed to go, but I saw one that looked kind of like that, so I was inspired. Okay, I'm going to put my windows on, and these are the hardest things to glue. <laughs> and then just line them up on the, now just make sure you don't cover the holes. The holes are for your interchangeable. Now, while I'm putting the windows on, let's talk about that. If you don't if you're not comfortable doing the process that I'm getting ready to walk you through, you don't have to. Just choose your flowers or your bunting and glue them in place. And I'll show you that. You don't you don't have to do the interchangeable. It is not, it's just optional. I just thought it was a fun way to have your Americana Village last kind of, I don't know, a little longer with the flowers up. Now, if you're straight Americana and you love flags and you want them up, go for it. You could just put those up. I'm just putting the shutters on either side. Cute. That looks like a Charleston house, right? So see how that's open right so use use the squares that i've given you to line your windows up now let's let's talk about this let's talk about your interchangeables all right so this is the part of the video where i have said if you don't need to watch me paint i have had you fast forward to here right so with your kit, you're gonna get two pieces on them that have the word jig on it, that I've scored on there. And notice that they have the, uh, the square in them that looks like the one under the window, okay? You're also gonna have four of these. I might, in the kits, I might add more, so don't panic if you see more of these. I might just add extras just in case you drop one, okay? So the way these will work, I should have brought one from another one that I've done, and I didn't do that, but that's okay. These are gonna go on the back, 
okay? And then this part will go in here, okay? So see how that fits? Now, this is where the jig comes in. You are going to need pencil, a pen, something. I like this mechanical pencil because I can kind of push the lead out a little bit. And you're going to align the jig on the back of your piece. Now, make sure you have it on there. Don't, it's not necessarily that you see the word because the flowers go one way and another, right? It's, I want you to make sure that the pieces line up. And when you get them lined up, you're gonna go into the square and you're gonna trace the square. Trace the edges of the square, not the center. See how I'm going all the way around the edges? I did just break my lead, but that's okay. And see how that looks now like that, okay? So I'm gonna do that on both of them. Try not to break my lead this time. Okay. Now on the flower one, you have to, the flowers go one way, then the other way. You have to look and see which way they go. So this one is not right because I can see there's a big leaf there and a, the big leaf is over here. So I need to do this and that will make that right and it'll be the opposite on the other one. So I just want them to line up perfectly. See that? Once they line up perfectly, hold them and again, trace. This one is more centered. This one is more at the top. Don't let that throw you. And then I have to rotate it on this one. If you're doing more than one house, if you got one, two or three of the houses and that have these interchangeables, they're all the same. Same, I decided not to change them up because I think it's just easier. Okay, so here are are four pieces with their markings on them. Now, you're just gonna glue on your posts, okay? Now, on the flowers, it's a little less precise. You don't have to worry so much about being precise. On the bunting, you probably want it to be straight, and this needs to be straight on there. Uh, I would suggest getting a toothpick. If you don't have a toothpick, uh, or if you don't have, um, you could use like, the small end of a small brush, you could use a small brush. Something where it's smaller than this square. I'm not gonna be using this crazy glue applicator. I'm gonna be using this one that came with my kit. But again, tooth, toothbrush, toothpick, I mean. I'm gonna get a little bit of glue my glue is a little gummy from being out for a while. I'm going to put a good dot of glue right in the center. Maybe a little all over the place, but I'm trying to make sure I see the square. And I'm going to do this one at a time. I'm not going to keep going. And then I like to line this up so I can see the edge this way and hold this this way. Okay, and I'm just gonna, that square is the same size as my piece. And I'm just gonna set that down right on there. I made sure it was nice and snug down. And now I'm not gonna touch that. And I'm not gonna touch that. Well, if you, I probably will here cause I'll probably show you <laughs> that it works. But in reality, I honestly would let that sit for a couple of hours. You really want that wood glue to do its job. Wood glue is very sturdy. I have these on two other houses that I've built. I've been tossing them around with photos and 
they have not broken. So you just got to be patient with them. So line it up. Give it a good pressure. And don't touch it. Doing it again. And again, if this process is too much for you, because some people, look, I know, I know how I design. <laughs> it's okay. All you will do, and I'll show you that when I'm done, is choose which one you really like. And you're just gonna glue that straight on your piece. You, you just won't be interchangeable. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay, last one. Just a good dot of glue. And I'm, I'm definitely pushing all the way down, even though it's squeezing some out. Okay, so now I'm gonna let those sit. If, for example, you do not want to do this, you could glue these on in a couple places. I've, you could glue that right under, if you want, cover your holes, right? Or you could bring it up enough to where you can glue it onto the actual window. You could even, well, you want to be able to cover this hole. I was going to say you could put it at the top, but no, you want to be able to cover the hole. So you just need enough to be able to glue it. So that would be cute. But I think you could just put it here and you would be covering. So I think that would work. If you do the flowers, you're going to put the flowers probably right on top. They're not going to go under. They won't work that way. Okay, so let me see. I'm gonna be gentle. I can fix mine. So then all you do, you won't have to be gentle once it is cured for a good amount of time. If you've got the patience, let it sit overnight. But then once you do that, all this does is it slides right in that hole. And they both land, see how that is? It lands on the window. It's not under. I designed that like that on purpose. And then you can pull them right out. And then you can put your flowers in. So cute. I love it. And that's your garage house. It, there's got to be a better word for it, but been calling it right now. This one's very muted. I will sneak peek the town hall. So cute. So by the time, well, um, by the time this video comes out, all of these will have launched and there's a bunch. I'm very excited about the hot air balloons, the Ferris wheel, um, all the little characters. I redesigned street lights. I've got trees fun trees that you can include so there's and there's a park and a nice cream truck so all kinds of fun stuff for the americana summer village so i'm very excited about that i hope you love it i hope this helps with the interchangeable i'm actually going to take these out and let them do their thing yep see and they just sat there for a second and they were just fine so that's great so you could do them super bright. I went a little more Williamsburg. You could go, certainly go Charleston and go pinks and yellows and all those colors. All right, I hope you love it. I hope you enjoy it and have fun.